Well, I should tell you there were many different approaches I could take. GIC wanted this talk to be 30 minutes, so I had to decide what I'm going to talk about. So 30 minutes is not much time. I thought I would just sort of explain my uh, approach to photography. So I'm just going to begin the show and talk about it. And I did this uh, slideshow this morning, so it's a little, uh, I don't know the Korean word, but Joe Job so okay. Can some of you help me with my English? Anyway, a little rough, a little rough, but I'll try and talk you through it and smooth over the edges. And afterwards we'll have a Q&A session. And also, uh, I should tell you that most of these photos here, the small ones are maybe from two years ago. Uh, one reason I wanted to do this talk is that my photos, I go out and take them and I come back and I put them in my computer. I look and I see a few of them I really like and I work on them. And I had photos in my computer from last May. So I was getting close to lapping myself. So this was an opportunity, I thought, for me to go in my computer and find the photos that I really wanted to do something with and frame them and have something newer to show you, put my best work forward. But unfortunately, as I started to do it, there were so many photos that I wanted to use. And I realized I have 200 framed photos now. Uh, 150 here, and there are 50 on Jeju Island. I'm probably leaving Korea in one year. And I started thinking, well, I can do another 100 photos, but that's 350 photos to get rid of sometimes. So I decided most people hadn't seen these, so I would do these. Maybe at the end, I can go to my website and show you some of the newer photos. That's a good workaround. Most people are right-footed, so you, there is something that you desire or something you love and you follow your heart that your right foot and as you go after what you love in life your left foot follows and you find what you need to follow your heart if you can understand that I'm using this uh, just to to show you I'm sort of a uh, right hemisphere sort of person. I go out and take photos because I see something that's beautiful or interesting to me, and I take the photo. I really don't think about what I'm doing. Another reason for this uh, talk today is for me to stop and force myself to think about what I'm doing. This is sort of a, a uh, left hemisphere type of activity. Uh, the hole there is the sea. Fortunately, the sea is full of water, so I spend a lot of time on the edge of a hill and a hole. You'll notice, though, this is my beach umbrella. I'm not on my beach umbrella because, if possible, I'm in the water riding a wave. Now, what I've been showing you, the hill and the hole, is actually a wave. Uh, if I go out and ride the wave, then I feel very energetic and I keep get hot in the sun and I feel very, uh, my animal nature begins to appear. I feel comfortable and full of energy. We call this stoked when you're surfing. If you go out surfing after surfing for a while, you come in and you feel stoked. You are full of ki, full of energy. So I'm on che che judo on the beach and I'm full of energy and I'm stoked. So I have a plus inside. Plus gets larger and larger. So as it gets larger and larger, naturally I'm looking for a minus. Now if I wasn't on Cheju Island, I could take some kind of uh, some kind of herbs to help me out. Samji Kuyokcho. You all know Samji Kuyokcho? I spend a lot of time beside the sea, so I really don't need that. But if you can read between the lines, I think you can see what I'm talking about here. So what do I do? I'm on the beach. Well, if I did like a lot of people and I went out and taught private English lessons for Oman one an hour, then I'd be a rich man now. And I could be like this fellow. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> no reason to go get anything. It's right there on both sides of him. Unfortunately, I'm a poor guy. So, 
But I do have something in my favor. I'm an edgy old dude. So edgy old dudes, they get up and they go and look for what they need. So here's a man with a camera. I guess he's having a lot of fun on the beach. So my point is, I go out to the beach and I take pictures of women. But I don't do it to be a photographer. I do it because I want to take pictures of the women. <laughs> So we've got two things here. This is taken from a, a little set of diagrams to explain the east and west. This is called travel. East and west, the difference between travel. Which one do you think is the east? Blue or the red? Well, it's the red. Uh, back when I first came to Korea, Japanese tourists were known for running around with cameras. I think today Korean tourists, maybe if a Korean tourist goes to New York City and goes to Broadway, they don't go in to see the show. They go in front of the show and take the picture. <laughs> the picture is what is important. But in the Western way of things, the picture is not important. What is important is going there and seeing and experiencing and being in the scene. I could get this photo. Not bad. But when you get this photo, you always want a little closer. <laughs> so I got a better camera with a telephoto lens, and then lo and behold, I got this photo. Now that's, that's what a telephoto lens will do for you. Now some people say this is not a proper photo, but you see that drop of water? That makes it art. I can show this anywhere. <laughs> so you've got to be, you've got to be tricky. Uh, this is on your flag. Most Koreans know very little about this. I made this not for this presentation. Someone was using it for uh, teaching about the Korean flag to American students. So I wanted to use this because this is the, the larger wave that I am part of. I've tried to explain that I go through life and I take photos from some kind of natural desire not to be a photographer, not to have a show, not to be famous or anything like that, not that I could, but it never even occurred to me. But there is a larger wave that involves my photography that I want to show. Uh, this uh, this textbook here shows the cycle of nature. Most Koreans don't, don't know that. You know the yang and the yin, but the line in between is even more important. The line in between is the cycle of nature. Uh, let's see, I don't know if I can... Uh, here we have spring. Here the heat, the yang, is the highest in summer. It's getting cooler and cooler. Sun's getting weaker and weaker. And here we have the coldest day, coldest day of the year. And then again, of course, we have spring. That would make a nice title for a movie, don't you think? Yeah? Bon heard that before, I think, have you? <clears throat> but also, the Neo-Confucians, and Itoye was a Neo-Confucian, they studied this because they believed this was, was the secret to understanding life. This was called the constant characteristics of heaven. They looked around them and they wanted to see what nature meant and they realized that man was part of nature. So they looked at nature and they tried to understand what is it in nature that we can see. And they found that there were the four seasons and the four seasons were given these characteristics. And the characteristics were like this. Spring is originating. In the spring, the flowers come out and begins. In summer, all the trees are full of leaves, flourishing. Nature is at its maximum. In the fall, we get some fruit on the trees. This is benefiting, benefits us. And then the best way to explain this is, in the fall, what do Koreans do? Well, they have Kim Jong. So they take that fruit or that, that vegetable and they make it. And in the winter, they have vitamin C. They can eat kimchi throughout the year. And then it happens again. So these are the these are the four 
constant characteristics of nature became a little famous was this kimchi boy. <laughs> you know, everyone, everyone says, okay, I'm going to take your photo of kimchi, but this is a real kimchi, kimchi boil. <laughs> so this is the or origination. This is when my photography began. Now we have the dark ages. Like I said, for 30 years I didn't take photographs. You may like to know why. Well, there are a lot of reasons which I won't go into now. But essentially, I decided to use my eye and forget about the camera. I had some work I needed to do on my eyes, I think. This is a photo of me before I came to Korea. Oh, yeah, you like that photo? <laughs> I don't like that photo. I don't like those eyes. There's nothing behind those eyes. There's just a vacuum from watching too much TV. Uh -huh. Be careful. Turn off your TV. TV sucks. <laughs> Look at that. Nothing. So, for 10 years I worked on my eyes. And lo and behold, that's the John Jackson I wanted to be. I put this in here because once I traveled for nine months in Samoa, Australia, New Zealand, and Fiji, I didn't carry a camera. I have two photographs of nine months of travel. This is one of them. Someone took a picture of me in Sydney playing my flute on the street to get some money to eat. So I only have two photos, but both of them actually are quite nice. So these were the dark years. There were many reasons I didn't take photos for 30 years. This is the flourishing stage. After 30 years, I started to take photos again because I found out that in Korea there's a place you can go and take photos and they give free soju. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the bowhead soju, Mehua Festival. Every year they have it. This year they didn't have it because of the uh, foot and mouth disease scare. <laughs> But uh, they, they, indeed, they give you a free soju. So there, there are a lot of women there, and uh, everyone's having a good time. Not all the women are quite as old as this one. There are a lot of models, as you can see, there are flocks of photographers with their super cameras. They look like cameras. <laughs> Lots of different models. <laughs> I can't afford a model, so here I found models, you know. <laughs> this happens in March every year if you'd like to go. So photos come out like that. Or does it seem cute? Uh, that's, not, that's not my photo. So I got a better camera and I decided I would go down and see if I could get some soju and some pictures of some girls. Because in March it's a little cold to go out on the beach, they aren't wearing their bikinis and all of that. <laughs> you just have to work with what you have. So I got a camera. This camera was a little uh, uh, power shot. It wasn't even a single lens reflex. And I went to my first photo contest in uh, Henan. I had two problems. One problem is my camera was a joke. He, the other photographers had tripods that cost more than my camera. <laughs> the other problem I had is, you see that big nose? <laughs> you don't know, but it's a problem for Westerners taking photos. <laughs> you know, my, if I continue, my face is going to look like the, uh, the character in the mass dance with the big twisted nose. What's his name? <laughs> so anyway, it's a dangerous profession. Also, I, I end up being the model because I'm the only foreigner there and they all want to get a picture of, of the foreigner taking pictures of the flowers because they think it's going to be a prize. So you see all these cannons are pointing at me. It's very uh, uh, difficult for me to concentrate and try to win a prize at this contest. So I needed some help. Fortunately, I had some help in my pocket. This is my great-great-grandmother. Her, her name is Sarepta. I adopted her as my guardian angel. 
when I have a problem, I don't talk to God because I think he's probably busy. So I talked to Sarepta. So I went to Hanalm, I went to the uh, photo contest. I tried with my little camera and my big nose. I couldn't get anything, so I went to uh, Wando and took some photos of some uh, Wegadi. And coming back to Hanalm, I noticed I had uh, 30 minutes remaining in the contest. And I thought, well, I'll try. So I stopped over and I uh, needed some help. So I talked to Sarepta. I said, Sarepta, I need some help here. If you can just give me a little shove in the right direction, I would like to win a prize. So I went out and I walked away from all the other photographers and I just wandered and there I found a little piece of heaven. It had rained the night before and there was a rain puddle. And the rain puddle had the reflection of the Mewa trees. You know, they say, heaven helps those who help themselves. I went over and grabbed the branch and shook it. And the blossoms fell into the reflection of the tree. So I took a, a lot of photos in the last 30 minutes. And I got silver prize. And, oh shit, mine won. <laughs> and free soju. <laughs> And I met a lot of models. So this is the way I like to do photography. You can go to your photo club and go out together and go take a picture of a temple, but it's not for me. So anyway, this is when I was I was flourishing. You know, look at there. I mean, there's one person that looks a little out of place in the back there. I think I had drank too much of that soju they gave me. <laughs> Anyway, I became a celebrity. There I am, have to wear flowers, and uh, it's a little embarrassing, but, you know. They, they gave me a bag full of soju, you see that? That's not soju, that's plum wine. Ten-year-old plum wine. Oh. oh, yes, my friend and I had a good time. <laughs> well, I became a celebrity. I went to Cheju Do and uh, went to the Hanyo Photo Contest, and uh, lo, lo and behold, I was on the cover. The photographer took this picture and won top prize and got Epec Man 1. You know what I got? Nothing. My photo, my photo, a silly photo on the cover. There's no justice, but I did get some, uh, some Sora. I did get some conch shells that the Hanyo cooked in a bed me. So it wasn't a complete disaster. Of course, when I go to Cheju now, <laughs> I have to hide because I am so embarrassed. <laughs> but I took my photo and I got my prize. This is my head yo photo. I got hip sign. I was satisfied. Anyway, things are really rolling now. I was really flourishing. I went to Naju. By the way, tomorrow is the Naju Pear Blossom Contest. So if anyone wants to drive down to Naju, you have a chance to enter the contest tomorrow. I got an Ibsen prize for this. Uh, the title of this was called Homeo Jung. There's one, one red blossom there. One of my students claimed that I uh, photoshopped it in, but no, that's natural. This is another contest prize. This is Jung Shim Sa, Kwangju Tourist Photo Contest. I got a prize. This prize I got last summer, this is at Kwakshi Beach of the uh, uh, squid boats at night at sunset. This is UNESCO World Heritage Photo Contest. Uh, winning this was very useful for me because here is the award ceremony. I'm in the background as always looking a little out of it. But what was very useful is this man is the former prime minister of Korea, and this man was the governor of Jeju. So now I carry this around with me when I go to the beach taking photos, because there's always someone that thinks I should not be taking photos of girls on the beach in Korea. And when they come up to me, I pull this this laminated picture out and I say, look at this. You know who this is? This is the prime minister of Korea and the governor of Korea, and they love my photos. And they leave me alone. So. 
it's very useful to go to photo contest and get something to use so you can at least pretend to be a legitimate photographer. Uh, this is another photo contest. I got a prize for the Kwangju Daily newspaper. This is the last one I got, Kwangju Tourist photo contest. So I'm really rolling now. <coughs> Now we're going to benefiting. After flourishing benefit, I started to try to make some money with my photos. I made a uh, calendar, 2009, using my photos. This year I made another calendar using my photos, just to do something with them. They accumulate in my computer. I did some uh, exhibition. This was exhibition at Chosun University Library, my first exhibition. I had over 100 photos. Uh, many of them are here. Uh, a lot of people came, but most of them were students from Chosun University. Also last year I had an exhibition at the Rose Festival, Chosun University, which was very good because the festival was held too early, there were no roses. So my, my photos were a big attraction. Also, as you see, now the women are coming to me. <laughs> now this is a way to do it. Get up on the beach and walk out in the sun and get sunstroke and skin cancer? No here at Chosun University, in the shade with a glass of soju, and the girls come to me. to see how easy it is? <laughs> also, I've started making some videos to sort of promote my photography. This is another reason I do photography, because it gives me a chance to learn something that I would not learn unless I had a reason for doing it. I don't study Photoshop to know Photoshop, I study Photoshop because I need Photoshop to do something. It's a different uh, perspective. Now this is the uh, American ambassador of Korea. She was in Peace Corps uh, at the same time I was. When she came to Korea, she decided to make a collection of photographs by Peace Corps volunteers in Korea. I had my photos I had taken during that one year. So I submitted them, and I think seven of my photos were in a very beautiful book. And when the book was published, they had an exhibition in Seoul along the banks of Chungaechun outside, and many dignitaries came, all the ambassadors and prime minister of Korea. Unfortunately, my photo was not in this shot, but you can see they were lined up along the stream there. I didn't go up because I wasn't invited. But my photo that I showed you was uh, featured in the uh, Tonga Ilbo national newspaper to advertise the show. Also, my kimchi boy photo became very famous, and I was invited to, uh, to lecture. Also, this came to Kwangju. This is moved in the library, so now I'm in my first ribbon cutting ceremony. Giving tours. Also, a lecture at the. Uh, I believe I see one of our guests there right up front. Yeah. Right here. So this is probably the highlight, the, uh, Barack Obama came to Korea at the time that they were having the exhibition. He attended the exhibition. I was uh, sort of excited that he had a chance to see my photos. Not many presidents have a chance to see my photos, but at least Barack Obama had a chance to see my photos. Uh, I was rather excited about that because it gives me something to talk about when I have to go on the radio. But. What really excited me is when I found out that my photo was chosen for the cover of the brochure for the program. So then I realized that not only did Barack Obama come to see my photos, but the leader of the free world actually held my photo in his august hands. Uh, that's not bad for an amateur photographer. And there you go. No comment. <laughs> Okay, this is the end of my little short presentation about my glorious history as a photographer in Korea. Uh, 
I think I've taken all the time here that was allotted for this kind of uh, presentation. As I as I said, though, uh, I don't have didn't have a chance to show you my latest photos. Uh, I have them here. We have internet. I have the access to them, but uh, I think you can go there and, and look at them yourself. I have a, a photo uh, album, and it has a slideshow, and the photos appear. Or you can go into different albums and look at the uh, the photos. Uh, I think they want people to have a chance to look around at the photos. And I have some uh, wine here. Also, this is uh, from Udung to Hala, so. I have some uh, some uh, mudum san masuri <laughs> for you all to drink, and I have some uh, samdasu water from Chejuville. I also also have some wine for some of you who would like something different, and we have some hors d'oeuvres that you can uh, enjoy. I'm going to be around. Uh, like I said, I'm sorry that we couldn't put some. Uh, explanation on all of these photos so you could understand them. Most of them have an interesting story, but I'm not supposed to spend more than 30 minutes on this talk, so I think I'm just going to end it here, but question and answer time is now. If you would like to ask me any questions, I'll try to answer them. Are there any places outside of Korea that you'd like to go to? Well, if I go someplace and do something in photography, it'll probably be in the Philippines. I, I don't like to travel with my cameras because it's one reason I stopped taking photos. I try traveling with my cameras and it's really a, a bother because not only are they heavy, but you have to worry about them being stolen. And you know, when I travel for nine months without any camera at all, it was very nice. But today, you know, you can get a very small camera. I have a small camera now that's uh, takes very, very nice photos. So I probably, if I if I do go someplace to take photos, it probably will be the Philippines. Because I go there and I like the Philippines and I may live there someday. Beaches, women, that kind of say. <laughs> Are there any other questions besides written ones? And if not, also you can feel free to ask our guests after the talk. As you said, there are lots of refreshments, so I think that's a comfortable time for people to approach and ask any personal questions or questions about photography or art that they might have. Yes, if you have any also about the photos, uh, like I said, uh, almost all of these photos, except for flowers, there is something, some story connected with them. I just can't take the time today to, uh, to do that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, do you apply a lot of digital filters or di digital manipulation to your photographs? Uh, no, I, I, one thing I'll tell you, some of you may be photographers, and I don't profess to be a photographer, so I can't tell you a lot about photography, but I'll tell you some things that I did that I wish I hadn't done. If, if you're going to take photos and you, you think that you would like to do something with them, save the original, try to take them in a raw format, we're all formatted just like taking it on film because then you can do a lot with it and save the original and then make a copy of the original and start editing that because I have photos now, some of these that I, I took, you know, uh, back when I first started and I've gone back now and there's a program I use that's really good, uh, Light Room. It's by Photoshop and it's very... Uh, specifically for working with photos and I learned how to do that a little and I've taken the photos I took back then and they were JPEG and I edited them and again JPEG and each time that I do that the quality of the photo is being lost but even even considering that I went back and took those very uh, what? Well, anyway de degenerated kind of quality photos and with with Lightroom I was able to improve them, so I don't I don't use much uh, to change out of saturation and sharpness and things like that. Sometimes if there's a photo where I don't want it to be particularly realistic, I will try to do something expressionistic just by changing it. And I'm not trying to get the original photo. I'm trying to express something else. I took a photo of a uh, of a carp, and I I took it in. 
it doesn't look like a cart until you look at it for a while and then you realize it's a cart, but everyone likes the photo. You know, it's just, it's cult, cult fishness. <laughs> so, and also I use a program called uh, Thumbs Plus, which is an excellent program for manipulating your photos, but it's not so good for working with them to make them better. Almost all of my photos I take and try to do something to improve them. And you know, like I said, I don't know a lot of, about photography. If I knew something more about filters, which I would like to learn next, I'm sure I could just screw on a little filter and get something that you know, I don't have to go in, in Photoshop and try to rework. We have another couple of questions. Uh, this one is quite like good. They, they said that they haven't seen all of your photographs, so they can't judge assume, according to all of them. But here in the room, they said there are a lot that have faces. So they don't know if it's representative of all your work. But at least with these ones, they wonder, why do you take so many photos of faces? Or what's the interest in faces? Well, <clears throat> Maybe a couple reasons. I've never thought about that because, like I said, I don't think about my photos. It's one reason I like to have these kinds of sessions because I'm forced to think about my photos. But a couple reasons I can think. One is an advantage of being a foreigner in Korea is that you get a lot of strange expressions. You know, you know this is this girl here. She's in Jeju, on British. She just turns around and sees a foreigner looking at her. You can see, you know, there there is something there that you normally don't see in a face that I call. If it had been a Korean photographer, maybe not. So I get a lot of different expressions. This how obviously you know, he's had a lot of. And he's delighted to see a partner, and the partner is taking his photo. So you know, this is the guy. And in, in Korea, there's a smile photo contest. And every year I forget to enter it because I'm sure this is a winner. You know, look at that smile. And also, I stay so busy as I want to give him this photo because, you know, he was such, he came up and said, oh, you're taking my photo, and I did the little video, and he said, well, am I going to be on TV? And I said, do I have your permission? Oh, of course, of course. And he had a lot of bottling. I'd like to give this photo to him because it's a great photo, and I'd like for his, uh, his children to have it and his grandchildren to have it. And this photo over here, which is one of the most beautiful photos I've taken of the farmer. I, I'm going sooner or later to take that and find that man I know where he lives and give that photo to him because, you know, I can make a copy if I want to sell it, but his family should have that photo. That, that photo is like the salt of the earth right there. That is Korea. So... One reason I take a lot of photos of faces is because I get a lot of really interesting expressions. And the other reason there are a lot of photos of faces, uh, I don't know how proper it is for me to show some of my full body shots off there on the beach. So I don't want people to think badly of me. <laughs> Nothing pornographic, I don't do porno. No porno. Never. Okay, so we're almost running out of time, uh, and I'm sure that you and others might like some refreshments. So I'll just ask one more. There are a few, but I hope that people could approach you after and ask them themselves. Uh, so I'll just finish with one question, which is, how does photography change your view of the world? How do you interact with it differently? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Well, I, I, I think photography has uh, helps me to order my world. I think that's one reason that we do photography. You know, Korea, people come up to me and say, you know, they look at some of my photographs, I can't believe this is Korea, particularly my birds. And unfortunately, my bird photos are not here because I took them all to Chichudo. You go to Chichudo and Chichu City near the city hall, there's a very nice Indian restaurant, Baghdad. All of my bird photos are there on display. I just gave them to them because they're better there than in my studio collecting dust. But people see my photos of birds and all, and they, they say, I can't believe this is Korea. 
I never saw these birds. I saw the little white things, but I don't know. This is beautiful. I can't believe this is Korea. Well, it is Korea, but it isn't Korea that you can experience unless you go out and try to make it. So with my photos and by going out, I made my Korea. I think it's a very romantic Korea and a very rich Korea. But Korea is full of things that are very distracting. So I'll trash around, there are telephone poles, there are wires. Sometimes I just look at the scene and think, wow, how beautiful this would be during Chosun Dynasty. When there were no telephone poles, when there were no wires, this would be fantastically beautiful. So I have to go around and work through the telephone wires and prop out the trash and I make a Korea that I want. So I came across on the internet uh, an expression that I might use for the title of my next uh, exhibition, if I have one. It was called Nostalgia for Paradise. So I think there is a nostalgia for paradise that I have and many people have. And by taking photos, I can experience that. So it has changed the way that I look at Korea because this is my Korea. Even though there are many things in Korea that I don't like and many things in Korea I think are ugly, but there are many, many places and parts of Korea that are beautiful. If you have a camera, you can take them and make them. So, that's my answer for that. So, by the way, let me show you one thing that I just saw here, talking about places. You don't have to go very far. This is at the Rose Festival. Now look at this little girl. <laughs> this is <a> consternation. <laughs> I love this photo. So anyway, thank you for coming and please look at my photos. And, and by the way, uh, you can go to my website and if you would just like a photo to have put into a better frame, then you can get the photo. And if you like something smaller, because people would like to have photos. If they like my photos, I like them to have a photo. So I have some like 11 by 14. You know, Home Plus had some uh, some 11 by 14 frames and they discontinued. So they had a big half price sale and I bought about 60. So I have a lot of frames that are smaller that I can print out a photo for and they don't cost as much money because some people can't afford to have a photo but would like to have a photo. So. If you're interested, there are some photos that I can make with small frames. And please go to my website because, like I said, uh, th these are not my best photos because I think I've gotten better over the past two years with more than my photos. So go there and take a look. And there's an email address if you'd like to contact me. And if you have any questions about photography or where I go to take my photos, uh, email address and you can uh, contact me. I'd be glad to uh, give you what advice I have, but keep in mind I don't profess to be a photographer. So, so far as technical matters, I'm probably not the person to see. Anyway, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed the uh,